Hi, welcome to iTeach 3D, where you'll find training to make you smarter in 3D. You're probably wondering, why am I rocking in a rocking chair? I should be upstairs animating, right? In 3D. Well, in this lesson, we're going to be learning how to animate the motion of a rocking chair. Why is this so difficult? Because it requires an animated pivot point. Animated pivot point. But it's really not as scary as it sounds, so let's go upstairs and start animating. Hey everyone, welcome to iTeach 3D, uh, where we do training to make you smarter in 3D. And today we're going to be doing a rocking chair animation, okay? And, uh, and so the reason we're doing a rocking chair animation today is because I thought it's kind of challenging to get a that rocking chair motion uh, going back and forth. And the thing that makes it so difficult is that it's got a it's got a moving pivot point, right? So let's take a look at that. So if I go up here and uh, press Alt W, which for some reason is not working real good on my computer today. So I'm just going to hit the maximize button. And then if you uh, if you select your rocking chair and go back and forth with it, that's not really the normal motion of a of a rocking chair. And even if I were to put the pivot here, right, and move it back and forth, it still wouldn't do the the normal motion because you put the pivot here, and then this piece goes below, and then when you go forward, this piece goes below, and it just uh, it doesn't work. So we've got to actually um, create a pivot point for my rocking chair. And, uh, and then make it move it, movable, okay? So that's what we're doing today. Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, I want to give credit to the, where I got my rocking chair from. And so I got the rocking chair from Sketchfab, and uh, I got it. It is this rocking chair. I want to make sure I give credit to where I get my stuff. And I just downloaded it, um, T.A. Holovan, uh, Rocking Chair HP. So this is the one that I'm using. I got it at... Uh, at Sketchfab, as you can see right there. All right, just wanted everybody to know. I want to give credit where credit's due. All right, so anyway, let's get started. I'm going to build this rocking chair uh, out and make it rock back and forth. So the first thing I want to do is I'd like to go ahead and um, create a dummy object. That's going to be our moving pivot point. And uh, I'm not being cruel. That's the actual name of it. It's a dummy object. So I click on this button right here, right? This is my helpers button over here under uh, create and then helpers. And then there's the dummy um, object. So I'm going to click it. And uh, I'm just going to drag out just enough so I can see it, right? <clears throat> and then I want to align it uh, with the chair. But I want to align it with like the center of where the pivot is going to be on the chair, okay? So I could do that. Um, I've already got the chair lined up with the uh, with this center line right here. Now, even though the pivot of the chair, you can see it, the pivot of the chair is actually not lined up right there. The way when I brought it over, it wasn't quite centered perfectly there. So I moved it over just a touch to the right. It looks like I moved it 2.292. Oh, am I back in inches? I thought it was in centimeters. So I guess we're in inches. So this is going to be a really large chair because I thought I was in centimeters and uh, I'm in inches. So this is this is an incredibly huge chair. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. But anyway, the point is, is that I need to get my dummy object to be right at the center of where this is going to be here. And since I've already lined the chair up, this bottom, this uh, the bottom roller right here, the rocker, whatever you want to call it, um, it's on line with my my zero line here. My uh, my z equals zero. How about that? Here's the z axis, and z equals zero. It's lined up right there. So, all right. I guess it's actually uh, where it's also where x equals zero right there is what it is. All right. So anyway. So let's uh, let's get this thing lined up. So I can just right click on the spinner here and it'll take it to zero. Right clicking on any spinner in 3ds Max, or almost I haven't I don't know that I've found any that it hasn't happened on, but right clicking on the spinners right here, it'll take it either to zero or one, whatever is the lowest amount for that particular you know option that you're doing. So in this case, zero is my lowest, so I'm right clicking and they go to zero. Now, I don't want to do this one because if I do that one, it'll take it all the way down there. 
And I'm going to leave it up here uh, for now. I'm going to leave it up there for now. So, all right, let's do this. <clears throat> oh, you know what? I kind of want to, um, yeah, we're okay. We're going to leave it there for now. All right, now what I need to do is I actually need to link the chair to the dummy object because when I rotate the dummy object, I want to be able to, I want the chair to rotate with it, right? All right, and so what I did there is when you're moving things, if you, if you're, as long as you're holding your mouse button down and you right click, it goes back to where it was at the beginning, it kind of undoes before it does it. I wish that feature was like in all my 3D programs. I wish it did that in Maya. I wish it did it in Unreal. I wish it did it in Photoshop. I just wish it would do that in all my programs. And uh, 3ds Max is the only program that uh, I know of that it does it in. So anyway, I love that feature. That's my favorite keyboard shortcut. Um, all right. So anyway, so let's get uh, let's get the chair linked to my dummy box. All right. We're going to do that over here in the upper left corner. Select and link. So I'm going to click it. It turns blue. And you always link the child to the parent, all right? So this is the child object, so I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna drag to uh, here and release on the parent, okay? So you click on the child and then release on the parent. Then uh, notice it's still selected there. I'm gonna right click and just go to move and that deselects that linking tool. So I'll select my, uh, I'll select my dummy object and let's right click, go to rotate, and let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good, right? <clears throat> All right, so that looks really good. Now the problem is that this is not the motion of rocking chairs. It, it's staying in one place, right? It's actually, as it rocks, it's not really rocking back. It's kind of pivoting off of that. And that's not the motion we want for a rocking chair. So basically when it rocks backwards, I want it to be like it's leaning backwards, okay? And, and on, the, on the rocker here. So let's do that. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I only want to do this uh, over, let's say, like 40 frames. So I need to change my timeline here. I don't want 100 frames. So I'm going to hold Control and Alt at the same time, and then right mouse button. If I click and drag to the right, then it extends my time to the right. I guess it doesn't extend it. It does the opposite. Actually, it takes 40 and moves it to the right. So it just moves that the right side of the timeline to the right is what it does there. So control alt and then right mouse click does that. All right, so I'm good here. And we want to start setting some keys. And uh, the keys I want to set, I want to set a key here at the very beginning of my animation. And uh, and so I'm going to I'm going to just uh, set a key plus and there you can see it set a key right there. Make sure you can see it. Yes. And then from here on, I want to auto key these. OK, I want to auto key. So I'm just going to go uh, 10 frames. And then let's just rotate it back a little bit, probably not too far back. Wow, 20 degrees. Let's do that. So 20 degrees. And just so you know, I do have my angle snap on. It's a good idea to uh, turn your angle snap on if it's not already on. So I have my angle snap on. And then uh, let's get it so over 10 more frames, it would rock back to center. And then 10 more frames, it would rock forward. So I'm going to just skip the, the middle frame there just so I can get nice smooth animation and just go 20 degrees forward. So it still has to go 20 degrees back and then 20 more forward for a total of 40 degrees. And then I'll let it go. And you can see it created a keyframe there. And then let's go to frame 40, and then let's go 20 degrees back to normal. Boom, right there. All right, so if I hit play, which is the uh, question mark or the forward slash, if I hit play, I get the rocking motion, which isn't bad, except if you'll notice between frame 40 and 0, like when it's wrapping back around, it's kind of hesitating there, isn't it? So that what that tells me is that my uh, my curve is off. So we're going to have to go into the curve editor and take a look at that. All right, so let's do that. So I'm going to scroll back here. Let's go into the uh, curve editor. I'm going to close my uh, transform type in. And let's go graph editors, curve editor. Boom. And there it is. So, all right, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to move this, zoom out a little bit, and move this down here so you all can see it. 
And uh, let's take a look here. All right, so I've got my rotation over here. All of the all of the X, Y, and Z uh, rotates are selected. I can't really see my my Z. I can barely see the green one. So if you click this button right here, Frame Horizontal and Value Extents, if you click that, it brings them all into perspective. Whatever is highlighted over here, it brings those into perspective. Now the red and the, the blue, the X and the Z axis, they're not really doing anything. It's just the green one. So let's highlight the green one and then hit that button again. Boom. And that gives us a little better look at our, our actual curve here. Now what I'm seeing that shows me that it's kind of not right is, uh, let's start here. So this... Um, this looks like it just came from up here because look, it's kind of, it's got that slow out going in there. It looks like it came from a slow in. Then it comes up here and see this one as it comes in, it looks like it's going to level off and then come back down. And that's the keyframe we skipped. See, we didn't need it there at frame 20, right? We didn't need it because it just passes right on through. We come down here, we slow in, and then we're going to slow out. It comes back up. But at frame 40, it looks like this one wants to come down. So we need at frame 40 for this curve to change and get it to look like it's, to get it kind of look like it's this, only the opposite. So we need it to come looking like it's up right through, and then it wants to keep going up there. And this one needs to look like it's come from down here and then coming back up there. So we're going to change the controllers on these, all right? So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Let's do one of them this way, where I highlight it and right click. And then uh, here's my controllers. So this is, this is going to be an in controller right there. So let's click here. And that's actually, currently it's a slow in controller. That's this one. We want a fast in controller. That's going to be this one right here, the fast in. So I'm just going to click. And there it is. And see what it did to that curve? It makes that curve, and it looks like it just wants to keep going right on up. Okay? So that looks good. Now we need to do this one. Now, yes, I know I can go here and just go over there, but let's, uh, let's learn a different way to do this. So I'm just going to come over here and down here in my timeline. Yeah, you can see that. And I'm going to right-click it. And we already said it's my Y rotation, so I'm going to go find my Y rotation. These are all the, the keys that are set there. I'm going to find my Y rotation. There it is. And just the same thing. This time it's my out controller. And I'm going to make it a fast out. Fast out. Click. And so look at this curve now. It looks like it wants to come from down here. It comes up and around. Smooth. No key there. We're just going to let it be smooth all the way through. comes down there. And then it looks like it wants to go back up. So that looks like a pretty good curve for my rocking chair motion, right? So what it does is when it gets to the, when it goes, when it tilts back, it slows up. So, right? So that rocking motion, when it, when it goes back, it kind of slows and then it goes down and it slows. So when it's like this, it's slow. That's the rocking motion. It's not linear where it's constant speed, no matter what it is. It's not like that. It goes back and it slows and then gravity takes over and it halts for a moment changes direction, comes back down, and goes really fast through there, and then it slows down, and then gravity takes over again, and then it's got to keep doing that rocking motion, all right? So that's why we have these um, slow in and out controllers here and here, and the reason we've got one here and here is just because we're looping the animation, and so otherwise we just wouldn't have one like that, and it'd look the same. All right, so let's close this. Boom. We don't need it anymore. Let's uh, see how this is going to work. So once again, I'm going to hit play, my uh, forward slash. All right, that actually looks pretty good. So I kind of like that motion. It's looking pretty good. And let's go from there. Now you can also, I keep my three fingers, my ring finger, middle finger, and pointer finger on my comma, period, and forward slash. And uh, the comma takes you back one, period takes you forward one. Or what I like to do is if you hit this button right here, the key mode toggle button, okay? What that does is now the comma and the period, they take you, they snap you to the, either the, the comma goes back to the next keyframe or the period goes forward to the next keyframe, okay? And so I can snap through this. I use that all the time when I'm animating. It's such a helpful uh, feature. I love that keyboard shortcut. So, so anyway, use those keyboard shortcuts. You'll be a better 3D artist animator. All right, very good.
Now let's keep working here. We got uh, we got to get this thing so it looks good. So I'm going to go move, and it looks good there. It's all straight and centered and everything. So I'm going to go over here to frame 10, and I don't remember where the center of this is. Okay, and so I don't know how far to actually move this. I would be guessing. So let's go back to frame zero, and let's create a little, another little dummy object like right here at the center so I know where the center is. So I'll just come back over to my dummy object and, and uh, whoops, click it, yeah, click it and drag it. I'm so used to the Unreal Engine of uh, just dragging stuff out. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so I do that, oh, I can close that. And then we're gonna right click on Select and Move and it brings up my Transform Type In, which I usually just keep open up here. And that way I can center things easily. Right click, and if I wanna go down, I can right click and just pull it up where I where I kind of want it to be. So I kind of like that. Um, yeah, that looks really good to me. And so there it is, that's, that's the center that I'm looking for right there. And so I'm okay with that. All right, but now as I, as I move this thing, it doesn't move with it. So let's, um, let's link the dummy to the chair now, okay? So we're gonna go back here, click Select and Link, and this time, remember, we always select the child first, and we click on the child, drag and release on the parent. Boom. All right, so now when I rotate this piece, the it goes with it, doesn't it? And I've been doing some work with the auto key button on, which can be kind of dangerous. And so... You should never really work with the auto key button unless you're animating because a lot of times you'll move things or model things or rotate and whatever. And uh, I've done it way too many times and I still do it. And so, but anyway, just a reminder, try not to do that. All right, so anyway, um, so now I know where my center is. So I'm gonna go back to frame 10. Let's go ahead and turn auto key back on. I'm gonna go into my move tool. And uh, the idea here is I'm gonna move my dummy object over until the center of, you know, let's say, I guess I should have put it down here, but this is kind of my center. If I take that and pull it right down there, that's right where my little crosshair is. That's where the center is. So I still need to move it over just a little bit more, probably right about there. There we go. And so I just animated that. So look, now we'll fix that in just a little bit. But anyway, got it. That looks good. Let's go back to, or let's go forward to frame 30. And then we're going to bring that over. Same thing. I'm going to bring it until it's just like right there. So I just get it to where it's right there. All right, that looks good. And then finally, let's go here and let's just move this back. Now, actually, this is another reason I like the transform type in. If I want to get that perfect at zero and I'm like, ah, I can't get it perfect zero. That's okay, because I can just right click on my spinners, boom, and it moves it there and it actually keyframes it, okay? I think that's really easy to do if I need to get it back to like zero. So, all right, let's hit the, uh, let's turn off auto key. Let's hit the play button. All right, so it's better, right? But still not quite 100%. So we probably need to go back into our curve editor and fix some things. Let's do that. So here I am, and I'm gonna go to the uh, to the next frame, and let's zoom out. I'm gonna put that in the corner again for y'all, and let's go back up to Graph Editor's Curve Editor. Let's take a look at this thing. Now you can see I've got both position and rotation. Now I don't need rotation anymore because we've already done those. So I'm gonna select the three of these. I'm holding Control to select, add to selection. Press our little button, framing button again. Boom. And Z doesn't look like it needs anything. The Y doesn't need anything. It's just the X axis there that needs some, some help right there, right? And so some of you can already see what the problem is. Once again, uh, you know, we've got these uh, slow ends going right there. And they probably ought to be fast ends on both ends there. So I'm just going to select that, right click. And uh, this is going to be a fast out controller fast out and then let's just go the other way boom so now I'm at keyframe 4 which is down here and let's make that a fast in controller boom and changed it 
So hopefully that'll fix it. And so I don't know that it did, but let's let's see. I'm gonna close this and see I can. Oh man, that's already looking much better. I love that. All right, let's hit the play button. Yeah, that looks so much better. Rocking back and forth. Good. If you want it to hold a little bit more, like on the ends there, I mean, I feel like this is a pretty good animation. So if I don't need that, I feel like this is pretty good right there. Rocking back and forth. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So what else can we do here? Let's go here and see uh, animate. Yeah, that's not bad. That's some pretty good rocking chair animation. But what if I wanted to, it to kind of hang time just a little bit more on like when it's all the way back and when it's all the way forward? Let's do that. So let's, uh, let's work on that just a bit. Let me get back here. Let's click here. Okay. My Alt-W key is like sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. All right. Get back into the curve editor. And uh, again, we just want that X position here of my pos position. And if I wanted to rock uh, back and forth, oh, actually, no, we don't want the, the position. It, well, we may have to do that a little bit. So let's do our, um, let's do our, this first, because this is our rocking motion, the rotation. So if I actually wanted to, to have just a little bit more hang time, then this uh, curve here needs to be a little flatter as it uh, comes in and goes out from this key. And it needs to be flatter down here because this is rocking all the way back. This is rocking all the way forward. And if we want it to hang there, then we probably need to, uh, we probably need to uh, flatten that out just a little bit. So I can grab, so if I select it, right, you can already see these handles right there. If I just pull on these handles a little bit, see that just a little bit there, and it flattened that out a little bit, and I'm going to grab this one and flatten it out just a touch, not a lot. Same thing here. I'm just going to flatten it a little bit. I think if you hold shift, it'll constrain. No? If you hold control, it constrains. I'm going to grab this one, pull it, hold control to constrain it. And just a little bit more. There we go. I'm also going to come back up here and do the same thing here. Because if I don't, let's see what it does. See how it's kind of sliding a little bit? Because we also need to adjust the position controller. It's just sliding just a little bit there. We don't want that sliding. Although, I have to tell you that I've been in a rocking chair, and when you're on a like a hardwood floor on a rocking chair, you actually kind of get that sliding motion a little bit. So it depends what kind of surface you're rocking on as to whether or not you really want that. Um, but I'm going to get rid of it. Let's pretend we're on carpet. How about that? Or a rug. So let's do that. So I'm going to go into here now. Same thing. And uh, make sure I'm constraining to my, uh, to my uh, what is that, the x-axis or just to the horizontal. How about that? And holding control, clicking and dragging just a little bit there. Same thing here, a little bit. I'm just eyeballing this. Holding control, flattening just a little bit. And grab this one just a little bit. And let's see how that works now. That's actually not bad at all. It might be slipping just a little bit, and I, and I can let you guys fix that, All right? So there it is. So it's holding just a touch more. You can see it's kind of holding, holding just a little bit more there on each one. So what if we go here and uh, hit play? That looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. So sorry if you can hear the dogs barking in the background. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> anyway, that's the rocking chair animation. I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, and so remember, this is uh, I Teach 3D, training to make you smarter in 3D. And if you would, please subscribe to my channel, I Teach 3D, and uh, check out my other videos. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave comments below, and also let me know if there's uh, any 3D things that you, uh, you'd you like to learn and uh, that I can help you with. Put it in there and I'll see if I can make a video for you. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it and uh, keep working in 3D.